You don't get convicted in sin. When you, when you hop in the bed with somebody, when you hop in the bed with somebody that you're not married to, when you hop into the oh, yeah. a bed to, to perform oh, a sexual act with somebody that you are not married to, there's no longer the conviction anymore. There's no longer that conviction there because you have had your conscience seared with a hot iron. Your conscience has been so seared with that hot iron. But you know when you come to Christ, it's like getting a meat tenderizer, brother. You know when you hit the meat with a meat tenderizer? You become tender again. You receive the spirit again. You don't have to tell me. You become oh, soft again. You feel that. I don't need to tell my brother. He's already experienced it. He's already experienced it. He's already been born again. His heart, his conscience is tender towards the things of God. See, you know, it's not that Christians are 100% perfect, like they never make a mistake in their entire life. Nobody is claiming that. But when a Christian commits a sin, they feel guilty. They feel like they've done something wrong. They feel like they have hurt the eternal creator of the universe. Their conscience feels guilty. They have hurt God. They feel that they've hurt God. That's what happens when a Christian sins. A true Christian cannot commit a life of sin and not feel convicted in their conscience. A true Christian cannot live in sin and not feel convicted by the Holy Ghost. When a Christian sins, they're going to feel convicted by the Holy Spirit. They're going to feel that what they've done is evil and wrong. But the good news is, is that Jesus Christ will forgive you. The Bible says that if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. All of your unrighteousness, all of your iniquities, all of your transgressions can be washed away by the blood of the Lamb. That's what I'm telling you today. No, it's not that, sir. It's the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. I'm not telling anyone to go out and sacrifice an animal today. I'm telling you that the Lamb has already come. I'm telling you that the Lamb of God has already come. John said, Behold the Lamb of God. It's one of my favorite verses. Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. He doesn't just cover it. He takes it away. He doesn't just cover it like they did in the Old Testament. He takes away the sin of the world. As far as the east is from the west, down into the very depths of the sea. Down into the very depths of the sea. Jesus takes away the sin of the world. Jesus Christ will take your sin away today. He will take all of your sins away. But you have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. You have to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and then He will exalt you in due time. You cast that burden upon the Lord. You bring it to God. And He'll take away that sin. Brother Dakota, why don't you get a message here? Alright. I know you got something to preach here. You know, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. See, God's already done everything for you so that you can have eternal life and be saved. And yet, most of you don't even care. Most of you don't even care about your soul. You don't even care about whether or not you go to heaven or hell. 
All you care about is your sin. All you care about is your, your little life, the things of this world, the things that concern you, because we live in a wicked generation where people only care about themselves. You only care about yourself. You have a filthy, wicked, dirty little heart. That's not God's love. You don't know. You don't even know what God's love is. Yes, I do. Yes. What is it then? Tell me. That's not God's love. See this. This lady just told me that I don't know what God's love is. I asked her what God's love is, and she said God's love is accepting everyone just the way they are. Well, you have to not know what the Bible says to believe that. If you believe that God accepts everyone just the way they are, you are ignorant of what the Bible says. You do not understand who God is. You do not understand what He says in His Word. See, the Bible says in Acts chapter 10, verse 28, it says, God is no respecter of persons, for in every nation, him that fears God and does righteousness is accepted with him. So, Unless you fear God and you are a righteous person that loves God and keeps His commandments, God does not accept you. God is going to reject you because you have rejected Him. So you people reject Christ. You're sin-loving God-haters. You love yourself. You hate God. You do whatever you feel like doing. And that's why God is going to reject you. Unless you repent and submit to God and His ways, God is going to reject you because you refuse to love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. You refuse to live according to the light of your conscience that God has given you. You see, God's already given you the ability to obey Him, to keep His commandments, but yet you refuse to. You refuse to obey God. You refuse to love God and instead you choose to love yourself. The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So because you've chosen sin over obedience to God, you're going to be rewarded with punishment. How do you know we've chosen sin? Because we're not standing in sin. Most people have. Maybe you haven't, but most of the people here have chosen sin. Because the majority are not saved. I can tell by one thing is that most of these people love the Sounders more than they love Jesus. You don't, you don't see anywhere in Seattle where this many people come, to, to, come together to worship Jesus, but they'll come to worship the Sounders. And that's idolatry. The Bible says, Be not deceived. The unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God. Neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor thieves, covetous, drunkards, extortioners, or revilers will inherit God's kingdom. If you're on that list... In the Bible, in 1 Corinthians 6, you're going to hell. If you're a fornicator, if you're an idolater, if you're a drunkard, if you're a homosexual, if you're a thief, if you're, if you're a swindler, an extortioner, if you're a reviler, somebody who swears and cusses and gets angry at other people, then you're not going to go to heaven. That's reviling right there. You just reviled me. And the Bible says you're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. You see, we live in a wicked world where men love darkness rather, rather than light. And most of you love darkness rather than light. Why do you think people love uh, such wicked stuff? It's because they're attracted to evil. They're attracted to darkness and wickedness more than goodness and righteousness and truth. That's why people love watching horror movies. They love... Uh, watching pornography. They love heavy metal. They love gangster rap full of cussing and swearing because you have a filthy, dirty, wicked little heart and you hate God. You love darkness rather than light. You See, you enjoy even hearing that. The Bible says, God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And this is the condemnation. That men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Neither will they come to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. See, so that's why you're going to hell, because you, you choose sin over God. You would rather follow the devil than follow Jesus. 
So I'm here to tell you, you need to change your mind. You need to say yes to Jesus and no to the devil. You need to say no to sin and say yes to doing what's right. You need to get the sin out of your life and start following Jesus. Jesus said, if any man will come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me daily. Are you denying yourself? Are you denying the pleasures of sin? If you're not, you're on the broad path that leads to hell. If you're not keeping God's commandments, if you're not living a holy life, you're on the broad path that leads to eternal damnation. You're not on the narrow path that leads to heaven. You see, it's just like all the people right now just flooding in to this game. All these people, hundreds and thousands of people, all just flocking to see this soccer game. And everybody is just going right along with it with no resistance. You're, you're swimming with the current. That just shows me it's just, like, it's just like sinners and lost people that are walking according to the course of this world. You're going with the flow. You're going with the flow of this world. You're not standing for righteousness. You're not standing for truth. You're just getting along with all the other people in this world that hate God and love the devil. And you're just going along to get along. Going with the flow of this world. You're just, you're just